So, Todd, I have a very important question for you. How's that for fan service? No, when it comes to Futanari, are you for Team Balls or No Balls? Why? Yes, do you prefer your food is to have balls or no balls? It's very important. This question will change your life forever. I'm not interested in this question. Well, well you see, the thing is, is I, I feel it has to be balls, right? Because how else would they ejaculate and... Oh, oh wait, never mind, we're, we're supposed to do this bleach thing, aren't we? Yeah... Supposed to do something. <laughs> Well, anyways, um, yeah, ignore that. Um, so yeah, so here, here we are, Bleach, third movie, Fade to Black. So if these titles weren't edgy enough as it is. Yeah, not edgy enough, I need to try harder. Well, Fade to Black was directed by Noriyuki Abe, just like the other movies and the anime, and written by Natsuko Takahashi, who apparently worked on Pretty Cure- How do you go from Pretty Cure to this? You just do. And Chrono Crusade, and other stuff too. And Masahiro Okubo, who I couldn't find much on other than he worked on Bleach before. Anyway, came out in December of 08. Then was dubbed in November of 2011. Isn't that fun? And this movie has a lot of focus on Rukia, so Rukia fans I'm sure are happy, aren't you, Die? Aren't I white? Aren't you happy? No, not really. Well, let's get into this, I guess. Oh, Fade to Black begins with, um, my Yuri doing some sort of experiment before we see the Seireite is under attack by something. What the fuck were these things, actually? Uh, um, come up with yes. a name for the die. Just monsters. <laughs> okay, fine. Monsters. Glore monsters. Do, uh, you, you heard what I said. Stop ignoring me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mayuri then has a nervous breakdown, claiming he doesn't remember anyone around him. Who are you crazy people? Basically me every time I wake up in the morning. He all sat in the mirror every day. Yeah. And... Yeah, we then cut to two people, obviously our antags of the movie, discussing how, yes, all Soul Reapers deserve to die. And we might as well tell you who they're voiced by here. So the female one is Laura Bailey. So if we hadn't heard her enough yet. No, not at all. And the male one is Richard Consino. And I mean, do we really have to say anything more than he's fucking Kenshin and Roroni Kenshin? No. I guess he's Takashi in The Prince of Tennis. And he's Duragon C. Mikado in The Bouncer. But I have, to, I have to name off one other role. He's Azumon Pilot Candidate! Everyone knows how shit that dub is! Did he lose a bet that day? Oh fuck, I mentioned that show, now someone's gonna say, You should watch that! You should watch it. <laughs> I heard you loved Gilgamesh. No! No, keep it away. Anyway, we then cut to Rukia, who's like, What's going on in the Seireite? Before she hears Laura Bailey's voice in her head, begging her not to go to the Soul Society. And... Yeah. We then cut to Ichigo. In the world of the living. And Cone's here too! Actually, Cone was... He wasn't in the second movie, was he? Yeah, the second movie was much better off for that. Wait, what? Hey, you leave Cone alone. He is a... He's a lion. He'll fuck you up. He will own yeah, you. He, he, yeah, he is the least egregious mod soul, exactly. <laughs> it's what I would say if Nova was... <laughs> Cone is cool! 
and apparently he's reading a letter from Rukia, and Ichigo's like, Ichigo's like who dat? Yeah, we're yeah, doing this plot line, but it's okay, because it's not done in a shitty way. So, Cohen's like, what, you don't know Rukia? Are you stupid, Ichigo? Which has Ichigo get have a flashback of the earlier scenes from the first episode. Actually, you said they were reanimated, didn't you? Maybe. And no, he, ha he didn't have a flashback, he had a sleep. Oh, what do you put him mean? You're taking- you're, you're omitting things and making these things come across as different scenes. Flashback dream? Is that different? Either way, he remembered. Which it is explained. I was kind of worried they wouldn't have explained why he remembered, but they did explain it. It makes sense later on. Anyway... That's what he tries reading Rukia's message, and... Well... Hey, man. It's your wife here. She's kind of weird with her letters. Something about going back to Soul Society to take care of business, which is when Ichigo and Cohen set out to find Udahara? Who doesn't remember her either? Oh, hey, we get to talk about another cast change here. But you're happy. Udahara was like Lindsay, but we discussed what happened to him last time, so now he's dug air holes, or Gein Ichigo. And. Honestly, everyone when they first heard this, myself included, did not notice a difference back then. And if you say you did in the comments, you're lying. I don't believe you. Except if you're not lying. No, it's the comments are definitely lying. You don't know that. Some people in the comments are cool. Anyway... Udahara, though, is like, oh, I don't know who this Rukia is, but you are right. I have someone in my customer logs with that name, so she must exist. Maybe my memory's being fucked with. Oh, by the way, did you hear that the Seireite was under attack? Yeah, some weird shit happened. Maybe they're connected. And... Yeah, that's what he's just like, look, I've got to get there now. Oh, and we're bringing a Cohen along, too, because... Um, he hasn't done anything in how long? He's got to do something. And he continues to do nothing. I mean, he, he does something in this movie, at least. We'll get to that. Well, Ichigo arrives at Soul Society and... Um... Talks about how fucked up the place is. I mean, Ty, is it that fucked up? Yeah, it's all covered in... White stuff. Uh, semen? <laughs> what kind of experiment <laughs> did you think Maori was doing? I mean, what we know what he did to Nebu last time to revive her, man. man. Anyway, he comes across Shuhei, or guy with 69 on his face. And he's like, hey, what's going on here? And that's when Shuhei's like, identify yourself. I don't know who you are. And Ichigo's like, but, but, but I'm your friend. Which, did he ever interact with Shuhei outside of the Bount arc? Yes. No, I'm being serious. Like, is this one of those things where the movie took something from a filler arc to insert it? Because I don't remember them interacting at all outside of that. What, what, he, we're gonna pretend, so... Well, these two have a fight, kind of. I mean, never thought we'd get to see that. And... Renji shows up, doesn't remember Ichigo either, and Ichigo's like, What? But, but you were my friend! You don't remember Rukia? And Renji's like, Who the hell is Rukia? <laughs> and... Yeah... Um, more of those... What, what did you call them? The, the monster thing is. The, uh, these things are the things that attacked by Ori. Oh, no, I was talking about the things that attacked the... the that fucked up the Soul Society or whatever. I mean, what the... they're, they're white blob monsters. That look uh, like snakes. 
Oh, semen demons. What? Yeah, sure. Okay, well, anyways, so semen demons show up and, um, get involved, and that's when Kumamura, the dog man, shows up. To, um, and it starts fighting with Ichigo. And I think he calls out his Bankai stand. Yeah, he does. Yes. And, yeah, Ichigo has to GTFO out of there. Then we we'll cut back to the the, the the Laura Bailey thingy and saying like, now we, we've done enough. Rukia will be safe from these Soul Reapers. And they fuck off too, I guess. Which is when we cut to the captain's meeting. Everyone's favorite moment. With a chain of room himself, I mean Yamamoto. Yeah, it's all Ichimaru's fault. Case yeah, closed. Yeah, and um, let's see, Anahana's like, they turned to stone. We don't even know if they're dead or alive. It's like Deborah's spit got all over them. Or, or, as, or, or as you seem to think, my or. Do you know Never mind. I'm not gonna finish that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um. Yamamoto asked Biakia about it. I heard your lieutenant has encountered him, and he called your lieutenant his friend, and Biakia's like, yes, but Renji was adamant about not knowing him. Because I actually do some investigating. I'm not an idiot like you. What? Uh, nothing, nothing. I didn't say anything. And Kumamura's like, he, had this, he was in a squad outfit and had the abilities of a captain. And they were like, that's impossible, no! And Yamamoto, it's impossible. What? No one's ever had that before. And Yamamoto literally says the line, "This is the worst crisis that the Sirei has ever faced." I what? It is. I mean, sure, they say that yes. a third of the Sirei was fucked up, I guess, by the semen demon things and people turning into stone, but. I don't know, I think he's hyping this up a bit too much. Anyway. Yeah. This one we, um, when, um, we cut to Biakia looking at a picture of his wife or something back at his home. Yeah, you remember that, right? Yep. Yeah, and that's when Ichigo shows up. And I was like, wait, is that Ruki? Oh wait, no, that's that's her sister. And Biaki's like, what? How the hell do you know that? My magic. Then Ichigo basically recaps for us in case we forgot Biakia's backstory that he gave Ichigo. You have the intention spying of us of a snail. A snail? You must be reminded of this thing. You would know if you're watching the series. I mean, at least it has good callbacks to it and hasn't fucked continuity. They even has have Byakuya's wife being terminally ill in the flashback, so they didn't fuck that up. And yeah, this is enough to make Byakuya drop his guard a bit around Ichigo, and that's when Renzi shows up to cuck the party. And we get to see these two have another fight. Kind Again. of. I mean, obviously, Ichigo's not gonna go all out on him. He does do Bankai, and he's like, Renji, why don't you use your Bankai? I never had a Bankai, you fool! And Ichigo calls him an idiot, saying, You got your Bankai to save Ruki. I don't know who that is! Yeah. Renji, you're, you're kind of silly, man. Maybe if he had a diary, this wouldn't happen. Like, like Udahara clearly had a diary. Dear diary, today I fail in love. So what you write down every night? Yes. I fail in love with you, Chaya. Anyway. Yeah. Byakuya then gives Ichigo the information he needs after cutting the fight short. That, uh... Rukia grew up in the hanging, or his wife grew up in the hanging dog. That that's where she was from. He's like, oh, okay, so that must be where Rukia would be then too. Cool. 
And he kind of fucks off. And Renji is confused by everything and doesn't understand. Because he doesn't know what's wrong with him. Part of him wants to hate Ichigo, but another part of him wants to love Ichigo. Oh, and Izan Pakuto is getting mad at him in his head for not going Bonkai. And Ranch is like, what? You mean I did have a Bonkai? No way, that's crazy. <laughs> Speaking of which, time for silly voice actor changes. Zabi Maru originally was both Vic Mignogna and Patrick Sykes. Now, it's just Liam O'Brien. And don't worry, it's not the last time this sword changes voice actors. You'll find out later on, in a few episodes down the line. Oh, damn it, Studiopolis. Yeah, but that was then, this is now. Did Liam O'Brien really need another role? Yes. Anyway... Um, I think Hanatra makes an appearance. Yeah, Hanatra makes an appearance, right? Because he finds Ichigo yeah. underground or some shit. In the sewer. Yeah. yeah. Which, again, another yeah. good callback. Hanatra was cleaning down there, and Ichigo remembered how to move around the Seirete without being detected. And Hanatra was like, Oh yeah, I can tell something's troubling you. I have the ability, if I touch you, my hands can read your very soul. Wolf. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Even Ichigo seemed a little thrown aback by that. It's like, oh, we're never gonna mention this again, are we? Yeah, Hanatra fucks off for the rest of the film. Spike Spencer doesn't, though. He plays an ad voice here, there. Oh, and obviously Cohen's been with Ichigo this whole time. Just He's been make, saying a couple of comments here, there, but nothing too relevant. As a cone so it remains not relevant. Wait, what? Yeah. So Ichigo heads off the hanging dog. During this time, though, we did keep panning over to Rukia and the two of them. Two antags, I guess. As Rukia has no memory either. That's the Laura Bailey and Richard Consino thingy. Man, I can't wait till we reveal their names later. This is getting kind of dumb. Um, go on about how, um,. She was one, or she had helped them way back in the past, and she had promised to give them names. But then tragedy struck when the Fire Nation attacked. No, something happened that Rukia can't remember. And the two of them don't want her to remember it, because it was so tragic that they're worried it might make Rukia lose so, them again. It was so tragic, it never happened. <laughs> I mean, it is explained, so it's okay. So yeah, so yeah. They, they try basically convincing Rukia, Snow Reapers are evil, you were with us before, and Rukia slowly gets her memories back, and it's like, I remember, I remember you too. I honestly thought these two were going to be some of the friends that Rukia and Renji had back when they were growing up. Because we don't know what the hell happened to them, Renji just said in his flashback way back, well, before long, it was just me and Rukia. Like, they didn't say they died, it just said th that it didn't say anything. So I don't know, wouldn't it make more sense for these two to be from that group? No. Anyway... Ichigo show finds Rukia, because Rukia runs out cause, to meet him or whatever, because Ichigo and Hanging Dog is able to have Cone track her down from her scent or something? Yeah, Cone's a bit obsessed with Rukia. Just Cone like you like die. Cone. Anyway, Rukia doesn't remember Ichigo, and she also calls Cone a fuzzy-faced freak, saying she would never remember anyone like him, making Cone cry. Like he deserves. And... Yeah, this is when the two Antags show up to pull Rukia away, and Ichigo more or less has a, a, an emo moment. It's like, I thought Rukia would be different. Because if I remembered her, I thought she'd remember me. 
I don't know what to do. I need to go listen to MCR on repeat. And yeah, this is when Cohen knocks some sense into Ichigo. Basically telling him, bruh, 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 you said you were going to save Rukia. So are you just going to sit here and be a, a, a hero of bitch all day? You resting bitch face. Yes. Oh well, then Ichigo is like, oh, you're right. I shouldn't be a bitch. I'm going to reminisce about all the times I had with Rukia before. And it's going to motivate me. You're right. I should go save her. Because she's my friend. And... Yeah, this is when Yamamoto, back there, is, soy phone shows up and it's like, oh, the intruder's been detected in this area, and Yamamoto's like, oh, I want Squad 10 and other Vrvrvs to go after him. So, Hitsugaya and Ikaku and Yumichika and... Is Rankiku there too? Pretty sure she is, right? Is she? No. What? What the fuck was she doing this whole time? She's in the film, she's just not there. Okay. Yeah, they all show up and... They're all confused, like, how do you know our names? And I guess they have a bit of a fuck. It does make me wonder, though, if Ichigo went all out, how good would he do against Hitsugaya? But, it's fight we never seen. Yes. Anyway, before things can get too out of hand, because Yamamoto shows up, everyone shows up, um, Renji's here too, and he wants to side with Ichigo, because he's like, he even, he utters a line that sounds really cringe, but amazing. Which like, my head tells me I need to hate you, but my soul tells me to be your best friend! Or it's something like that. And it's something you'd only hear in a show in an anime, tell me I'm wrong. Yes. Oh wait, it is. <laughs> So yeah. so yeah, Udahara then shows up along with- Oh yeah, I gotta talk about what Udahara was doing real quick. Okay, so earlier there was a scene with Udahara where, um, so because Mayuri remembered nothing, they basically had him detained. He didn't even remember he was a captain or anything, because memories were fucked. So Udahara had to sneak in to where he was being detained. And he was telling Mayuri, he's like, I think our memories are being fucked with. Oh, and also, I found this in your room, and it was a copy of his brain in a jar, wasn't it? Yeah, one of those cryo... cryo jars. Yeah, and again, it's... that is so fucking Mayuri. We already discussed last time how he copied he his own organs. He literally turned into a puddle of goo and revived himself after his first fight. He's also a man who puts himself in dark face just because he can. He's fucking weird. Or awesome, depending on your outlook. It probably serves some stupid purpose. Well, like I said, or he's awesome, depending on your perspective on the world, I guess. Anyway. So, yeah. Udahara basically does, drops the exposition um, when he meets up with Yamamoto and friends while Ichigo and Renji run and off. For whatever reason, he's wearing the fucking. <laughs> the, 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 the captain's. Who, <laughs> Udahara? Yeah. Yeah, Yamamoto's he's even like, like what, what are you doing here? I thought you couldn't come back here. You were exiled. And he was just like, um, I always had the way to come back here. I just chose not to because you guys are dicks. I mean, do you blame him for that? Yeah, he was wearing the squad twelve. Ca he was wearing squad twelve captain jacket. Maybe my area. the fuck he... Yeah, maybe my area thought he was still the lieutenant, or you know, second in command of the research team, or whatever. Until now, or so I don't know. It's like, right, let's let's just make him wear this, so we could just re recycle stuff from from the pendulum mark, I guess. Well, Udahara explains that years ago, when he was still head of research and development, he had discovered a hollow that was sort of parasitic that would latch onto people and had the ability to shear away memories. 
I think you all know where this is going. So, yeah, basically, Mayuri got oh, attacked. Mean... What? Oh, you mean like that scythe thing that Mayuri got attacked by? And Rukia? Yep, and because of that, everyone's memories of Rukia were erased, and it's why Mayuri went, well, crazy. But because it's Mayuri, he backed up all of his memories on separate hard drives, is what Udahara said. I, I guess those brains that he has in those cryo things are hard drives. Sure. How do you? How does Human that work? Does he like? To work that way. Does he just inject them into his body? How does that work? I it must just know. Works. Anyway, the reason Ichigo remembers is because, well, Rukia transferred her powers to him, so actually he had a connection to her, so he was able to maintain memories of Rukia. He's got it memorized. Exactly. And Cone wasn't affected because he's a mod soul, so he's just a pill. So, maybe that means we should have had Nova here. He would have been useful. Yeah. Yeah, but then we would have had Kuroto, so fuck that. Never mind. Yeah, we would have had those other two, and they and and, and they should just go crawl into a hole and die. Anyway, I mean, what? Yeah. yeah. Renji's still trying to remember Rukia. Oh yeah. Um, and Ichigo is trying to track her down too. At the they're back at the Seirete now, aren't they? Or a soul, yeah. And, yes. um, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention real quick. Soyphone, of course, was going to attack Udahara, and that's when Yoroichi showed up. And she goes, Lady Yoroichi, every time I see you, it fills me with love. I am now instantly calm. Um, and, uh, uh, yeah, sure. That, that was the dialogue. <laughs> He's not making anything up. <laughs> I, I mean, would you believe me, though? Would you believe it was a lie? Yes. Okay, so yeah, I back at the Seirete, Renji it. tells Ichigo, Well, I mean, you could trap her via your spirit ribbon, because you guys share the same spiritual pressure, right? And Ichigo gives it a shot, so they're able to track her down. Go away, Papa, fuck you. Anyway. Yes, they say that, that it's actual dialogue in the movie. Um... And... Yeah, when they manage to track down Rukia, she has the two of them with her, the two Antags. And they're they're having a debate, like Ichigo and Re um, is trying to say, Rukia, you're a Soul Reaper, come back to the Soul Reapers! And... The Laura Bailey thing, he's all like, no, no she's not, she's gonna be with us forever and ever. Because she's her friend. She's all we have. And then the Laura Bailey thingy fucks up when Ruki is confused, not knowing what to do, and says, Please, Rukia, don't go back to the Soul Reapers! And because Ruki is not an idiot, she's like, Wait, go back? So I was with the Soul Reapers! You were lying to me! I mean, to be fair, she was starting to doubt them earlier after the whole Ichigo fiasco, where she's like, he seemed like he knew me. You better not be lying to me. No, why would they do that? And, yeah. This is when the two of them, the two Antags or whatever, are like, okay, fine. We're just gonna merge our bodies to you, Rukia. Because apparently we can do that. No, um, Udahara did explain. It's a uh, parasitic hollow thing. Remember? So it can latch itself on to people. So it, it actually does make sense. Especially with what we find out later in the flashback with what happened to the actual hollow. Anyway, when they're trying to take over Rukia, Michelle Ruff has to do an amazing over-the-top scream for, like, ten seconds. I kind of feel bad for her having to do that. I guess it comes with the territory of being in a shounen, huh? Duh. And now everyone arrives at the Seireite. 
where it's explained that they need to get to the control tower from the research development thing to um, hit the, the the MacGuffin magic thing to, to stop all the shit from running haywire. I, I guess the power source of the hollow. And... Yeah, everyone's here. Kenpachi's here. Because, of oh, course... The power source of the hollow, which the... Yeah, I was gonna have yeah. you cover it. Come on. It, 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 it's just the Maori goose stuff. I mean, oh, the semen demon what? thingies. Yeah, that's what they were. That that's what was that's right, released. Yeah. 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 Just releasing even more. Yeah, and everyone's here. You even get to see uh, Yamamoto, Shunsui, and Ukitake all release their Zanpak toes and Udahara. So, technically raising the stakes from the last film with that. Also, Soifun and Yodoichi are here, because of course, and... Actually, did Ikako do anything during this scene? I don't think he got any focus after that. He was here. He got, no he got b bitch slapped back into the statue of Kenpachi. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. And that was what re released Kenpachi. And, um... Yeah. So everyone is having a fuck off with the semen demons. While, um... The possessed Rukia thingy is trying to shear away the memories of Ichigo. And I guess Renji's here too, fighting it. Oh, that was actually something I thought was funny though. When you remember the scene where Renji was shuttling Ichigo that you could ride on Zabi Maru? He's like, "Ah, pretty clever, isn't it? We could actually get carried by my Zon Pato. And Ichigo's like, "I, I, I you know, you know what? Just never mind. Hurry it up already." Anyway, Renji tried. <laughs> he did. But yeah. Um, so Ichigo's trying to save Rukia. Things are getting pretty dire as they're going to shear away all of Rukia's memories of Ichigo and make sure it's like Ichigo never existed. Then Rukia will only notice them Senpai instead. And that's when Byakuya shows up. And, yeah, which one of the fucking Hados did he use? Or Kitos? It's the one that um, binds them, isn't it? Yep, the one, the, the one that was used in the last arc. Yeah. yeah. And he was saying, like, since she is my on sister. Rukia, okay. Yeah, on Rukia, again. <laughs> He's like, she's my sister, so it's my responsibility to put her down. And Ichigo's like, no, don't do that. I will save her. She once stabbed me to give me her powers. It's time I return the favor. Also, yeah. Should probably mention the music is hype as fuck here, because of course it is. The, the song that was playing this time is called Stand Up Be Strong, and if you like symphonic, over-the-top, epic battle music, then that's another song you should all look up. Anyway... So Don't it's, do it, it's just fucking with you. No, I, no, I'm not gonna troll about music. I wouldn't do that. It's not- uh, unless it's the Resident Evil Director's cut OST. Hey, that is a jam. <laughs> anyway. So Ichigo reminisces one more time about the earlier shit in Bleach. About the first episode. And he stabs Rukia. And I guess saving her too. And Rukia remembers everything. So if you have amnesia, the message of the movie... Rukia, not Ark. Resident Evil Survivor reference? Really? Yeah. <laughs> the message of the movie, though, is if you have amnesia, get stabbed. It works. Because, I mean, if you saw it in a movie, clearly it must be true. Or keep a brain in a jar as a backup. That too. Or just do what Udahara did and keep a fucking log down of everything important. That probably seems the most realistic thing to do. 
No, the brain in the jar is the way to go. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Remember to upload your memories to the cloud. You know the sad part is that's probably going to be a thing in like 20 or 30 years. <laughs> We're all going to become part of an isekai program. Anyway, getting off topic. So after Ichigo makes sure Rukia's okay, he's like, go to them, because the, the two of them, which are, by the way, I'm pretty sure we mentioned our siblings. But if not, we did now, are clearly dead and dying and stuff. So Rukia rushes to them for their final moments. Say, I remember you, and I remember everything. <laughs> And that's what we find. And that's what we find out what happened. Of course, I'm making it stupid. That's the point of this. You, you, you're, you're just shoving that Resident Evil Survivor thing in even more. I remember everything. <laughs> yeah. So, basically, apparently, the Hollow possessed a Soul Reaper that attacked the siblings in the past, and Rukia showed up to save them, and she was going to get killed by the, this possessed Soul Reaper until the, the siblings saved her. And the Hollow had no choice but to possess the siblings who were also attacked, and he, he basically possessed corpses, because the siblings died when it possessed them. And then it retreated... Yeah, then it retreated to Hueco Mundo, and I guess during then the siblings' consciousness took over the hollow, so it was able to control its abilities. So, it sure, just works. We'll, we'll roll with it, whatever. And because Rukia was involved in the attack from the hollow, she lost all memory of this day when she woke up. And Rukia then gives them the names Homura for Laura Bailey, and Shizuku for the Richard Consino thingy, which for some reason, I kept getting their names mixed up and thinking Shizuku was the female one. Does it really matter? Yes! Does it? That's anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. The stupid part is this, well, it's not really stupid, but the part of the thing is, this scene is actually very well English dubbed from everyone involved. As Bleach usually tends to be during the serious moments. Actually, that's yeah. the thing with this movie. I didn't notice any silliness. I tried to. I tried finding something you silly. You tried underrating it. I know. But yeah, the final scene is Ichigo basically saying, well, it's time to go back home, Soul Reaper. And Rukia just says, don't call me that. The name's Rukia. And I guess there's a post credit scene of Cohen being like, what, where'd everyone go? You all forgot me! No! No, that checks out. It's just Cohen. Apparently that scene, by the way, was for the physical version only release. So if you saw this in theaters, that post credit scene wasn't there with Cohen. So I guess even the writing staff forgot Cohen with the theatrical version and realized, oh shit, we gotta add in a 10 second post credit scene for him. Yeah. And I guess that's it. That, that's, that's the movie. Oh, the ADR director was Steve Kramer. And he proved once again, he actually improved drastically. No fuck ups, no silliness. So props to him. There was no, uh, you know, head of family or Lisa being the ninth lieutenant instead of the squad eight lieutenant. Or any of that. Now, I don't know. Well, how does the animation die? Oh, it's just like the last two movies. <laughs> You're like, oh, yawn, it was boring, it was... They, they put more budget into it. They put more <laughs> budget into it. Yeah. And we already said the OST is fucking awesome, which again, Shira Sugisu. Do we need to say any more than Avon Jellyfish or Attack on Titan? Yes. 
seriously, look up Stand Up Be Strong. It's it's probably my favorite song from the Bleach OST. Anyway. So yeah, this movie is really good, and unlike the other movies, or the first two movies, this one is on Blu-ray in North America. Because yes, fuck you, Viz, for not putting the first two. I'm still bitter about that. It's what you would have wanted. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so... Uh, any so final thoughts European on... European Blu-ray treaty. <laughs> I'm not even going to try pronouncing the Diamond Dust Rebellion Blu-ray. Blu I'm not. I'm pretty sure it's in Italian or some shit. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> any thoughts oh, on... Italians <laughs> are the next enemy faction. Yes. They're gonna hit you to forget about it. Freaking WWF event. I'm a Survivor Series 91 with that. Hit him with a forget about it! Uh, okay, we're getting off topic. Point is, Fade to Black is actually a really good movie. You all should watch it. It's on Netflix, which I, I, I hope you didn't watch this video since we basically spoiled the entire movie in a really dumb, over the top way. Did events out of order a little bit too. I had a contact, and he forgot some events. I made him sound like different events. Hey, you covered it up, that's what you're here for. You're good at that. We got this. That, see, there's no I in team, because if there was, then it wouldn't be a team anymore. It'd be a time. Or a team A. Team E? I don't know what the hell I'm saying anymore. Clearly, I'm drunk. He's something. Whatever. Whatever. Do you have no, any issue with face of black? Help. I am the one that has to deal. Do you have any, anything to say about the movie named after a Metallica song? Um. Or are you just gonna tell people to go watch it too? You should go watch the FMA movie. <laughs> oh, well, there's two animated the, FMA movies. The no, live fuck. action. Don't you fucking dare, no! <laughs> Don't listen to him! He loves it. He'll tell you all about it in detail. <sighs> go watch the previous Dubster Dive. I got no facts or wrong in that piece of shit, and I exaggerated nothing. Wouldn't it Trust be two ago? No, it was the last one. Was no, well, you forgot the April <laughs> first. Oh, well, that wasn't a dumpster dive. That was just an April Fool's thing. Gore four proves a fade to black, by the way. But all right, so that was fade to black, and promise next one won't be as much of out of context or you know what I mean, out of order. But it seemed the easiest It'd way to go about this impressive. movie. It seemed the easiest way to go about this, instead of going, well, then we go back to Rukia, then we go back to Ichigo. So, I don't know, it seemed the simplest way to cover this movie. Also, what the fuck happened to Hinatoro? I want more Spike Spencer, damn it. Go to Australia. Dingo ate my baby? Yeah, don't say anything. Just make people uh, uh, people can look it up and they'll just see what we're talking about. Anyway, to their imagination. And I've said anyway a lot this video. As I was saying, that's Bleach Paint the Black. The same thing. <laughs> that was Bleach Paint Black. Shut up. We got, we're going on too long. We're rambling now. Let us know what you thought Who's of it. Hope you all we? enjoyed it. And if you didn't enjoy it, let us know why. And what was your favorite hype moment from the movie? Because, yeah, when shit got going, this movie had a lot of hype at the end of it. And I guess next time, we'll be covering Bleach episodes 213 to 229. Lieutenants, Iran cars, and fillers. Yay. And fillers. Actually, yeah, I, I think it really is half and half, half canonical, half filler next time, too. It's gonna be great. Alright. 
Where's all, all you th Where's all you thought? I just hope you all enjoyed our my drunk ramblings, even though I'm not drunk, I'm completely sober, believe it or not. And him making fun of me and being mean. <laughs> it's what they come here for. It probably is. But I'm just happy we got to watch a good movie for once after the reflection in live action FMA. I think my sanity's slipping away and I'm still trying to get it back. My brain is you still scrambled from that Milton shit. Michigan. No! Please, no. <laughs> Whatever. That was Fade to Black. Let us know what you thought. Hope you all enjoy. Have a great day and all that stuff. Hope you all had a good Easter weekend, etc. Until next time. Until next time, guys. Thanks again.